Today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I am streaming to you from beautiful Budapest here located in Central Europe, the capital city of Hungary. I hope everybody has had a great week. I was away in the Austrian Alps, but now I'm back ready for another week of live IELTS streaming. Hi, Hikmatillo. Good to see many students in class. Hi, Pavan. Good to see your members joining in. Also, students, this class, these lessons are brought to you by aehelp.com for preparation, getting ready for the academic version of the exam, for the general version of the exam. Check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s help.com. That's general IELTS help Dot com on both of those websites we have loads of materials to help you improve and reach your needed band scores hi Pachu hi Violet Nguyen hi Sanjay just a quick glimpse at our websites while we wait for a few more students to join us this is our academic uh, portal here for the academic IELTS click that big red button to join our premium package once you do you can log into your My Student account. In your My Student account, you will start with a tour of all of the wonderful assets, and then you will see some computer based practice exams, fully online interactive course, exams, workbooks, study plans, PDFs, lesson videos, over 100 hours, more than 10 audio CDs, and additional services as well. Uh, same idea for the general version of the exam, just uh, with a different background, green background. And of course, the reading and writing sections are specific for the general at G-I-E-L-T-S help.com. Click that big red button to join. Hi, Carolina. Hi, Moro. Hi, Roshni. Good to see more members in the class. All right, students, uh, we do have an app for the academic, academic IELTS help. I'm really excited to say that um, within a week's time, we will have the general app uh, released as well, general IELTS help. If you have questions, uh, you can contact me. Send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. I will gladly answer. Hi, Tan Sandy. Good to see more new members as well. Uh, I just posted our schedule for the live IELTS uh, classes streaming this week. Uh, classes are uh, 13.30 and 15 o'clock start time according to Central European time. And this is the schedule for November 26th through to the 30th. So all the way until Saturday. Um, today we start with speaking part one. Uh, students, this is a speaking class, so make sure to speak, okay? Repeat and speak. Uh, repeat not just the answers, but also repeat questions as well, all right? So do both, okay? Practice questions and answers. Uh, tomorrow, we'll begin a task two for members at 13.30, and then we will have speaking part two for everybody at 15 o'clock that's tomorrow's class today we're focusing on speaking so let's get into some practice okay uh, the speaking interview for the IELTS exam is the same for the computer-based and the paper-based versions of the test this means you sit down face to face with an examiner the examiner is marking you real time okay they are also recording your speaking just in case they need help with the marking, they need to remark. Uh, your speaking is recorded and it's kept on record for I think at least a few months um, while uh, they make sure that uh, they haven't made a mistake and you can re request for a remark. The exam takes about 12 to 15 minutes. Okay, it's usually closer to 12, 13 minutes these days. A lot of students taking the exam. Go to your exam center early. Become familiar with your surroundings. Go to the washroom. Relax. Take some speaking questions with you to practice with other people who are waiting for the exam. And last week, I told you to do two very important things or take two important steps 
before you walk into the exam. What were those? What were those two really important steps before your speaking exam starts? I highlighted these last a week ago before I went away for my ski trip. So anybody remember what those two really important points were? Carolina, very good. So Carolina says it's an error checklist. Um, Fatima says it was a mental checklist. Very good. Sanjay, yeah, I called it a mental checklist. It's a mental checklist because it's in your mind, but yeah, it can definitely be on paper. So it's just a checklist to remind you of points to pay attention to that you might miss regularly when you're practicing, like remember to give examples, uh, remember to keep a strong voice throughout my answers. A lot of students start strong and then they go a little bit softer and weak. So keep a strong voice throughout all of your answers. Make sure to answer all questions in part two. Pay attention to the card. Okay, so these are just some points, all right? Always give reasons. So your mental checklist is one. And what was the other tip that I gave you? So you walk into your exam a couple minutes before you go, aha, mental checklist. Now the examiner says, come on in. You go in. And the second point that I mentioned, <laughs> Sanjay says, visualize the examiner as your godfather. Uh, not bad, Sanjay. I said grandfather, not godfather, grandfather, but godfather is pretty good too, I think, Sanjay. So visualize the examiner as your grandfather or your grandmother, okay? So you feel comfortable. All right, students, let's warm up with some of the icebreaker questions the examiner will ask you. So when you walk into your sit-down exam, the first question that will come at you will be, may I see your identification? Identification, please. Okay, that's always the first question because that's how they can start the interview. You have to present them with the ID that you used on your registration form and we ask this question all the time because you have to be very dynamic and quick and natural to answer this so may i see your identification please okay fresky hidre says yes here it is andy den says yes sure here's my identification or if you want to say a different word then you can use the uh, abbreviation id so yes sure Here's my ID. Hikmatillo says, yes, certainly, please take a look. Here you go. Roshni says, certainly, here it is. Please have a look. Okay. Again, students, repeat after me because those are great answers. Lots of different ways to answer this. Yes, of course, here it is. A couple students are asking, when do I greet the examiner? Wait for them to greet you. They will be forward with you. So they'll say, hi, I'm your examiner. My name's Adrian. Then you can say, hi, my name is Adrian. <laughs> I'm your candidate. Okay, so yes, certainly. This is my ID that I used for registration. Please take a look, okay. Again, I'm helping to remind you that you have to use the same identification uh, in your sit down and in your speaking exam as what you used on your registration form. So uh, repeat after me again, students speaking class. I'm hopeful that all of you are speaking nice and loud and repeating uh, my sentences. So may I see your identification, please? Yes, certainly. This is my ID that I used for my registration. Please take a look. Okay. All right. Now, while they have your ID, they will ask for your full name. Okay. Uh, what is your full name? Again, practice saying this in different ways so you come across as natural and confident. So what is your full name? They need to match this with what you see on your ID. So MD Hanif Ahmed says, my given name is Hanif and my family name is Ahmed, but please 
just refer to me as honey. Okay, interesting. Great name. It's a good way. Tan Sandy says, my name is Tan Yan Xin. Uh, I also go by Sandy. Um, Tan, a uh, little bit, I'm going to fix that a little bit so it's more natural, okay? So Tan, do it like this. My name is Tan Yan Xin. I go by Sandy. Please just call me that, okay? So don't say I also go by Sandy because that doesn't necessarily mean that I should call you Sandy. So you want to make that more clear, Tan. You want to say, I go by Sandy. Please just call me Sandy. Okay, so really emphasize that. All right. Um, Daniel Tarasov says, my given name is Danielle and my family name is Tarasov. So could you please just call me Danielle? Okay, Danielle, very good. That works. Okay, it's clear. All right, Kriti uh, Bajaj says, my name is Kriti Bajaj. You may call me by my first name, Kriti. Okay. Uh, you may call me by my first name. It's okay, Kriti. It's a little bit like you're putting yourself in a higher position. If you want to put yourself in an equal position, um, then you should say, you can call me Kriti instead of may. Okay. Uh, Rose Medul says, my full name is Rose Abdo Medli. As you can see, they misspelled my name in my passport. They forgot the letter E at the end. Just call me Rose. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Okay. Um, good, Rose. That works. Uh, interesting explanation. Sure, you can do that. Just make sure that you explain very clearly. Okay. So... <clears throat> My full name is Elizabeth Anderson, as you can see in my ID. Please just call me Liz. It's a pleasure to meet you. So a couple of you said, like, when should I greet the examiner? If you haven't formally um, said uh, any kind of greeting to the examiner, then you can add this short little phrase at this point to emphasize to them that, you know, you're, you're feeling good about being there and uh, communicating with them. So repeat after me. What is your full name? My full name is Elizabeth Anderson, as you can see in my ID. Please just call me Liz. It's a pleasure to meet you. Okay, all right. Now, a couple more warm-up questions will likely follow. They want you to be comfortable uh, during these warm-up questions. You should again be reflecting on that mental checklist. So. These warm-up questions should also be a reminder of your mental checklist, especially if you forgot it before you walked into the interview. So when you're doing these or when you're answering these, you should be thinking, okay, I need to be confident. I need to be clear. I need to use different kinds of conjunctions, correlative coordinating. So that, that should be rolling through your mind as you hear these questions. Uh, icebreaker questions. Okay, so what do you do in your spare time? What do you do in your spare time? All right, Preeti says, in my leisure time, I prefer hanging out with friends and family at Central Park or watching the latest Hollywood movie at the theater. Just last Saturday, I watched Joker with friends and really enjoyed it. Uh, Preeti, very good. Okay, nice uh, paraphrasing leisure time instead of spare time. Uh, you gave a couple of clear responses and uh, even gave a smooth rolling example that you just watched Joker. That's very good. Okay. Moria says, I prefer checking up on my reading during my leisure time. Just last week, I finished reading three novels. M Moria, checking up on is a bit awkward in that context. Uh, checking up on means um, uh, kind of like supervising, like I'm checking up on my friend 
because he caught a bad cold and I want to make sure he's doing okay. Oh, sorry, Moira, I'm misreading. My bad. I'm catching up on your reading. Yeah, that's fine. Catching up on your reading is okay. I read checking up, but I see it's catching up. Yeah, Moira, that works. So I prefer catching up on my reading during my leisure time. Just last week, that, that's good, Moira. Okay, sorry. My bad. Um, satisfying time says, uh, whenever I'm free, I try to experience new activities with my friends or family, sports or chess, for example, and also learn new skills such as languages or coding. Chabi, satisfying times. That's a really nice answer. Uh, Chabi, what I like about your response is that, um, you introduced your example uh, with the actual nouns like sports or chess, for example. And that's really good, students. Notice how you can do that in English where you don't need to say, for example, chess or sports. You can actually say sports or chess, for example. You just need a little break after the nouns. Okay. All right. Good. Let's take one more. Okay. Uh, Ishak Hussein Ansari says, whenever I have loads of spare time, I usually spend it um, reading novels uh, because I'm an avid reader. For instance, last week I finished uh, Nepali's novel Muna Madan. Uh, very good, Ishak. Careful with word repetition. Okay. So... <clears throat> In my free time, I like to kick back and relax with a good book. Just this past Saturday, I finished reading Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell, a novel about social movement. Okay. So uh, what do you do in your spare time? In my free time, I like to kick back and relax with a good book. Just this past Saturday, I finished reading Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell, a novel about social movement. Okay. Good. Next question. Who do you spend your free time with? Who do you spend your free time with? Again, give me a nice answer. You should be thinking answer, explain, example. That should be your standard, your foundation for the speaking section. Think answer, explain, example. Okay. Hassan Sadiq says, I prefer sitting on the sofa alone, reading books. I'm quite an introvert, so I like to be alone, far away from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. Okay, Hassan, that's a good answer. A couple of slight grammatical corrections. Carolina Sanyo says, I usually spend my spare time with my boyfriend, Carlos, who invites me over to his house. Last Saturday, we made a delicious lasagna. Perfect, Carolina, very nice. Good use of the adjective clause, who invites me over to his house. Excellent. Okay. Hikmatillo says, I usually spend my downtime with some friends of mine uh, together playing video games uh, on the computer. Last week, we enjoyed playing Counter-Strike and it was great. Very nice, Hikmatillo. Again, just a couple of grammatical corrections. Moro Sadie says, as I mentioned, the vast majority of my spare time is devoted to my... Uh, beloved, uh, three children, and my lovely wife. Uh, Moro, very good, okay? So re reflecting on your previous answer, making that connection, nice, okay? 
Uh, Moro, it's not like your three children. It is your three children. So just a slight correction there. Are devoted for my beloved three children and my lovely wife. Okay, simplify it. Don't overcomplicate, Moro. Don't overcomplicate. Like is when it's an example. Okay. All right. Let's take someone else that we haven't heard from. Alisher Bobojanov says, usually I spend my spare time with my friends. For example, last Sunday we went to play ping pong and had a lot of fun. Alisher, that's good. Uh, maybe name your friends. So usually I spend my spare time with two or three good friends. Um, I went with a couple of friends last Sunday and we played uh, ping pong and had a lot of fun. Uh, again, remember your quantitative language, students. So numbers are always good, okay? So including how many friends or how many people you're with, um, as Moro did, saying three children, okay? Not just children, but my three beloved children, okay? Numbers give clarity to communication. I most often... Sometime... I like that uh, use of downtime there by one of our students. That was great. I most often spend my downtime with my lovely wife and three-year-old daughter. We uh, frequently go to the park. Or shopping, as we did just yesterday. Looking for some new and interactive toys. Okay. All right. Uh, and I do want to connect this with my previous answers, so it'll make sense to say, well, when I'm not alone, curled up with a book. Okay, and that way I make a connection to my previous answer, which was in my free time, I like to kick back and relax with a good book. So again, have that nice connection to your different thoughts and responses, and that will definitely help you to increase by a half band, even a full band, okay? It really helps your coherence uh, score and your fluency score as well. So repeat after me. Well, when I'm not alone curled up with a book, I most often spend my downtime with my lovely wife and three-year-old daughter. We frequently go to the park or shopping, as we did just yesterday, looking for some new and interactive toys okay uh, notice this use of as here it's um, the same as saying for example just much faster it uh, will help you to maintain fluency and also uh, it doesn't allow for the examiner to interrupt you if you use for example for instance too often the examiners get scared that you're going to begin this long story and they will often interrupt you with their next question. So to avoid interruption from the examiner, use the words as or just go into the example, use the noun as Satisfying Times did um, a, an example earlier. Okay. All right, students. So uh, once you're done your uh, icebreaker questions, then the examiner will introduce a general topic for part one. And here the examiner will say, let's talk about communicating. Okay, so let's talk about communicating. Okay, students, here I'm going to challenge you. Remember, connect your answers. Think correlative conjunctions using not only but also, both and, whether, or, neither, nor, uh, either, or. So use these correlative conjunctions, use quantitative language, use numbers, okay? And again, remember, answer 
explain, example. Don't overspeak. Okay, this is the goal for this part one of the speaking section. So let's talk about communicating. Who do you text with the most? Who do you text with the most? Let's see some answers for that one. So, uh, Iraj says, frequently I chat with my friends and we talk a lot, which I love to do with my friends. Um, Iraj, that's not clear here. Uh, here it's who do you text with the most. It's probably looking for one person and you have to use an adverb of frequency. Okay. Pavan says, I frequently test, text my best friend, Kevin. as he not only solves my problems or helps to solve my problems, but also motivates me the most. Can you give me an example of, of that, Pavan? Uh, satisfying Time says, I text my mother approximately 47 times a day. I consider this my highest number of messages I send to any one of my contacts. Just the other day, I counted it. Uh, when I participated in a university survey. Okay, that's an interesting response. I enjoyed that. Thank you. Andy Den says, well, I usually use WhatsApp to communicate with friends and text most of the time with colleagues at university and my mom. Um, she even makes a video call before I go to bed. Mm -hmm. And he says, I text with my sister the most. She is just a year younger and is my best friend. We discuss personal as well as professional matters quite openly with each other. Really nice answer, N.A. I like it. Good explanation of why you do it. Good example. Fantastic. I can see some students are really improving by participating in these live classes regularly. Fantastic. Good job. Amin Abdur. Abdurrahmanov says, I do not prefer my time chatting, but when I'm bored with my studies, I like chatting with my elder brother because he motivates me when I need motivation. Okay, I mean, uh, avoid starting negative. So the question is, who do you usually or who do you text with the most? Um, so just start with texting your brother the most. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I text with my best friend, Corey, the most because we frequently discuss both business and personal matters. Just yesterday, uh, he was organizing a birthday party for a mutual acquaintance and asked for my advice chatting through WhatsApp. We must have sent at least 20 messages back and forth okay all right so there is a nice robust answer with all of those elements that i was asking you for answer explain example quantitative language correlative conjunctions repeat after me I text with my best friend, Corey, the most because we frequently discuss both business and personal matters. Just yesterday, he was organizing a birthday party for a mutual acquaintance and asked for my advice chatting through WhatsApp. We must have sent at least 20 messages back and forth. Okay. Nice fluency. Again, make sure to stay strong throughout the response. Even if you feel like you've made a grammar mistake somewhere in the middle, uh, if you can catch it and correct it, great. 
but don't lose confidence, okay? So keep your answer nice and strong all the way, all right? Here we go. Next question, students. How do you usually communicate with your friends? So how do you usually communicate with your friends? Okay, give me a nice answer. Pachu Yadav says, I usually text my colleagues, uh, not only for uh, the schedule uh, to produce food products, but also to keep records of those products in software applications. Okay. Let's see. There's a little bit of a different question than before. Uh, Sumo Yoon say, Fulayev says, I would say I mostly interact with my mates via social media apps such as Telegram, Instagram, and WhatsApp. However, I do occasionally phone them. Uh, 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 it's good. Okay, it's a good answer. Um, why do you interact with them through social media apps mostly? And how often? Can you give me a number? Like how much time you spend with social media apps each day or how often you access them? So give me a little bit more clarity. You have a good start. Now work towards more clarity. Uh, Karen Technical Point Just Bring It says, well, I usually talk with my friend with the help of social media, such as Facebook. Um, just last week, I chatted using Messenger, right? Facebook's um, interactive tool in real time is Messenger. Harry Singh says, I usually use WhatsApp, uh, Instagram applications to communicate with my friends as it is a very easy method. Moreover, sometimes we can video call through these apps. Um, Harry Singh, keep it to yourself. So I can video chat through these apps and not only hear my friends, but also see them. Uh, students, if I ask 10 people, why do you use WhatsApp or Skype or Messenger? There's a very popular answer I'm sure that I will hear, and I don't see that yet in your answers. Uh, Fatima says, I generally connect with my mates through social media networks like Instagram and Facebook. It's just yesterday I found my long lost high school friend on Facebook and it was pleasant to have her back. Okay, good. So, <laughs> Taylor Reese says, because it's free. <laughs> right, exactly. It's convenient and it's free. Okay, it's cheaper than using your phone line, especially if you're talking long distance, but even locally, if you have an internet connection, it's much, much cheaper, right? Very good. Moro says, as I uh, referenced before, I primarily get in touch with my closest friends through WhatsApp, three times a day at least. Uh, I experience neither delays nor interruptions in this particular app. Very good. Yeah, WhatsApp is well built. Absolutely. So, I most commonly reach out to my friends and family through social media apps such as WhatsApp, as I had just mentioned or Messenger, or either Messenger, or Skype. Not only because I can conveniently video chat if I want, but also because it is 
free as long as I have an internet connection. Okay. All right. So repeat after me. How do you usually communicate with your friends? I most commonly reach out to my friends and family through social media apps such as WhatsApp, as I just mentioned, uh, or either Messenger or Skype. Not only because I can conveniently video chat if I want, but also because it's free as long as I have an internet connection. All right, fantastic. Okay. Here we go. Next question. Are you a talkative person? And this why or why not is often in brackets or parentheses. They will only ask you that if you don't answer it. So are you a talkative person? Chabi says, oh dear, I love talking, especially when I participate in a discussion related to my interests such as uh, the universe or computer science, not only to share my knowledge, but also to fill my hunger for knowledge. Okay. Satisfying times. A couple of corrections there. Pay attention. Uh, Hassan says, no, I don't like to talk a lot. I prefer to listen rather than speak as the idiom goes. Uh, God gave us one tongue and two ears so we can listen more than we can talk. Perhaps, Hassan, it's good. Okay. Um, as the saying goes, instead of the idiom, as the saying goes, or the proverb, Hassan, um, when it's biblical, they're called proverbs, proverbs, like this. So I would say, Hassan, as the proverb goes. Okay, proverb is basically saying or idiom that is biblical or from the Quran, obviously. Okay. All right, Carolina says, no, I'm not. I consider myself an introvert uh, who likes to listen to others more than talk. Some people confuse uh, me with shy people, but I'm quiet, not really shy. Okay, Carolina, good. Um, you don't have to say introvert person, Carolina, because an introvert can be a noun. So you can use it without the word person. We usually do. We will usually just say I'm an introvert, not if we say, then we say I'm an introverted person. Okay. So extrovert introvert is the person noun. You don't have to add person. Okay. All right, Violet Nguyen says, oh, nothing. Roshni says, yes, definitely, I'm a chatterbox. Um, either I like to talk uh, to more people because it makes me feel energetic. Like yesterday, I talked with my friend for about a half hour. Okay, uh, Roshni, not bad. Just careful with grammar. Okay. Uh, let's take someone new. Agisi McJane says, not really, as I like to keep um, my thoughts private, uh, especially um, certain confidential information and not get into problems. Um, this is the reason I stay indoors most of the time and keep to myself. All right. A couple of slight corrections there. All right. Javilio uh, Salungi says, I'd say I'm more of a listener than a talkaholic, um, but it doesn't mean that I hate talking. Uh, when I want to, I can talk a lot and quite loud, especially when hanging out with my good friends. Javelo, not bad. Again, just some uh, grammar corrections there. Okay. Yes, 
I'm a very social person. In fact, others have referred to me as a motor mouth or laser lips in the past because I tend to talk quite a bit more than the average Joe. I love to express my thoughts and opinions and perhaps this is one of the reasons I love teaching IELTS. All right, there's a little bit of truth from my life. Um, repeat after me. Are you a talkative person? Yes, I'm a very social person. In fact, others have referred to me as motor mouth or laser lips in the past because I tend to talk quite a bit more than the average Joe. I love to express my thoughts and opinions and perhaps this is one of the reasons I love teaching the IELTS exam. All right. So that's my answer there. Let's go to the next question. Um, when is it difficult for you to talk to others? That's kind of an interesting one. When is it difficult for you to talk to others? Okay. <laughs> Farahaya, thank you. I just read your comment. I hope your exam went well. And I'm glad that you're hanging around for some more lessons. Hopefully you're picking up some new words. Okay. All right. So. Uh, Dung Nguyen, yes, they're expressions, motor mouth and laser lips. They're expressions. Yes, absolutely. They're expressions for people who talk a lot. Uh, not necessarily the nicest way to respond to someone who likes speaking a lot, but makes sense. Okay, so next question. When is it difficult for you to talk to others? All right. Now, if that's a little bit tricky when you hear this kind of a question, you can buy some time by saying, hmm, I never gave that much thought. But now that you're asking, I would say that, okay? So this is a nice leading expression here that allows you some time to uh, think of a good answer, all right? So, hmm, I never gave that much thought, but now that you're asking, I would say that when you do this, you should visualize when it's difficult for you to speak, okay? So Violet Nguyen says, it is very difficult to talk to people when someone interrupts my conversation or a lot of adults are standing around me because I don't feel comfortable around many adults and I only like to talk about my, okay, and then it continues on. Ksumayun says, without any doubt, it is really inconvenient to talk to other people when I'm in a hurry and lacking time because of my heavy workload. Yeah, Ksumayun, very good, okay. Not inconvenient, but inconvenient, okay. Awaz Aksmadov says, in my opinion, um, when a person isn't in an upbeat mood, it is complicated to communicate because they feel nervous and they may shout loudly, which causes trouble for others. Um, Awaz, not bad. So a couple of grammatical mistakes, but again, students, remember part one in your IELTS speaking, the questions are usually targeting you, okay? So when the questions ask about you, do not generalize your answers. Then talk about yourself, me, I, okay, myself, right? Um, 
Hassan uh, Sadiq says, one of the most difficult situations when I can't talk to others is when I'm using a second language because of not only language barriers, but also uh, cultural differences. And these can lead to some embarrassing um, situations. Okay, Hassan, that's not bad. That's good. Okay, yeah. So when you're speaking another language, it can be difficult uh, to, d to talk with others when it's not your native language. Okay. All right. Let's take someone new here. Uh, Salman Alotaibi says, I find it hard to engage in conversation when the topic is new for me. Uh, for example, talking about cosmetics and beauty products is not my cup of tea. Therefore, this would be an awkward conversation. Okay. Salman, good. Very good. Okay. So, hmm, I never gave that much thought, but now that you're asking, I would say that it's quite challenging for me to engage in conversation when the discussion topic is unfamiliar for me, especially if it is in a second language such as English. Just yesterday, two of my foreign friends were discussing car mechanics in English, which is not my cup of tea. So I sat quietly listening. All right. Repeat after me. When is it difficult for you to talk to others? Hmm. I never gave that much thought, but now that you're asking, I would say that it's quite challenging for me to engage in conversation when the discussion topic is unfamiliar, especially if it is uh, in a second language, such as English. Just yesterday, two of my foreign friends were discussing car mechanics in English, which is not my cup of tea, so I sat listening quietly. All right, again, Students, make sure to retain fluency with long answers, okay? And um, only use idioms if you are 1,000% sure that you're using them correctly, all right? It's very, very important. Okay, students, um, next question. Have the way people communicated these days changed compared to a generation before? So have the way people communicated changed compared to a generation before? Give me a nice full sentence answer. Remember, this question is present perfect. Have past participle communicated. So you want to reflect that in your answer. Okay. Amin. Abdur Hamanov says, I think that the way people communicate these days varies from previous times because people benefit from the advantages of technology. Okay, good. Just make sure, I mean, to use present perfect. Uh, Moro says, oh, yes, definitely. Uh, it has transformed dramatically. Um, active voice, Moro, not passive voice. Uh, since the foundation of new devices, it only takes a few seconds to reply to a vital message through the internet in comparison to old times when sending letters could take days, if not weeks. Very good. Shabi says, technology has changed the way people communicate from face-to-face -face interactions to getting in touch through distance, through long distances, using devices, cameras, wireless networks. 
It's face to face, but in a virtual environment. Udara says, yes, in our modern society, generation to generation, new technology has been introduced. Uh, Udara, don't use the word things, replace it with the appropriate noun. In this case, you want to say technology. Okay. All right, Jas. Ramgahriya says, with the help of technology, the vast majority of people use mobile phones not only because they don't have time to meet each other, but also because it is a convenient mode of communication. Jas, I colored the last part of your response a bit to make it better. Okay. All right, let's take one more. Hariom Thakur says, obviously communicating has changed from the past uh, generation. We used to send letters, whereas present day we use the internet, which allows us to connect easily and quickly with just about anybody at any time. Okay, good. Um, so, yes, the methods we implore these days to connect with each other has dramatically revolutionized has now we use the passive being dramatically revolutionized by technology technology namely the internet and smartphones. As I had mentioned previous, the most common way for me to communicate with friends and family is through applications during my parents' time, this simply didn't exist. Okay? Don't forget, even if you said it two or three sentences before, you already talked about using modern technology to communicate, so make sure to connect with that. Okay, repeat after me. Have the way people communicate these days changed compared to a generation before? Yes, the methods we implore these days to connect with each other has been dramatically revolutionized by technology, namely the internet and smartphones. As I had mentioned previous, the most common way for me to communicate with friends and family is through mobile applications. During my parents' time, this simply wasn't possible. All right, I'll leave the last question for you to practice on your own. You can send it to me as an MP3 recording to my email and I will gladly let you know roughly what band score you would get for your response. The last question is, if you could improve communication technology, what might you do? That's kind of a fun question to think about. That's all the time for today's class students. Again, you can send your MP3 uh, recordings to my email, adrian at aehelp.com. And remember to check out our websites, gieltshelp.com. Click that big red button to join our premium package and aehelp.com or academicenglishhelp.com 
click that big red button there to join our premium package and get all of our videos, practice exams, and interactive course. Tomorrow, I will be back with task two, writing at 13.30 and speaking part two at 15 o'clock. That's it for today's class. You're very welcome, Carolina. You're very, very welcome, Violet Nguyen. Have a fantastic rest of your Tuesday, everyone. If it's late in your country, I wish you good rest, sweet dreams, and a refreshing, energized tomorrow. Bye for now, everyone.